This is Dwayne at RealFixesRealFast.com. Today we're working on a 07 Chevy Uplander, a problem with the doors. Now this seems to be a growing problem. If you've got an Uplander with a door that isn't working right, this might just be the fix. Now these vans have power sliding doors. They work with the button. They should open and close themselves. Now the problem that you're going to see, the complaint is either it's not working right, it'll be working, but it's not working right, it won't open all the way, close all the way, or it won't latch, or sometimes your door jar light will stay on. So the problem is the door is not fitting in and latching correctly, but it will work. Now in this case, ours is not latching, it's not latching tight. And if you look right here, you can see that we're not latched up tight. This part is not going in all the way, and you can actually push it in. So the problem is it is not latching, it's not pulling it down into the latch. Now the problem is not that it won't pull it, we've actually got a roller back here that's bad that's keeping it from that. So to fix this we want to open the door, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to pull the fuse on this circuit. It's behind the panel over here. If you look right here, it's called the PSD. It stands for Power Sliding Door. Number 25 is for the right side, so I'm going to pull that fuse. Now the reason we're pulling this fuse is because for any reason, bumping the key or something like that, we don't want this door to move and offset everything. So pull the fuse so that it can't work. Now when the door is fully back, if you want to see if this is your problem, there's a roller out of here that gets broken. And you can tell because this door moves like that. Should not have that kind of movement into it. Now the problem is here is this roller. This is what's in there and as you can see it's got two rollers. Well one of them is damaged up in here. Ours happens to actually be falling out. It might just be that your bearings are bad and giving you way too much movement. With all that kind of movement the door cannot latch correctly. Now it's not a very hard task getting this out of here. There's a little keeper on the bottom of this. You can just pop it off with a screwdriver. And then we need to drive this pin up. But then the door is going to sag. So you need to get something like a milk crate or a five gallon bucket. Something that's just about the same height as this. So when we pop that out we can set the door on it. Now I don't want to scratch the paint so I'm just going to put a little towel in here. And I just need to drive that pin up. Now once we get the pin up, then we just need to lift up on the door and we can slide the pin out. The pin just goes in there. Now the door is free, we can pull it out and set it down on our milk crate. Now I want to get the door out of my way, so I'm going to slide it forward. just pop that out, that should just pop back. Got my bolts out so I don't lose them. Now you can just let this hang to the side. Now this, this piece of trim right here is held on with one bolt, the same T30. You want to take that out. Now with that out, it gives us the ability to lift this out. Now again, this is the new roller that we're going to put in, so that you can see it's in a track there. When we pull this back, you can see one of the rollers on the top is missing. This one's there, but this one's actually missing. So to get this out, you just want to tip it forward, and then it'll come out like this. There's the new one. Now this is held on with the cable on this side and this side and you just have to 
move that forward to get that out and the same thing here just to get that out. Now we take our new one there's the part number but be sure and call your dealer and get the very specific application for yours because they could vary. Then we just want to take this one and pop that in place bring this cable back now we've got the back one in but when we want to put the front one in it's very difficult to get that lined up to get it just in place you can fiddle with it if you want to but what I usually find to make it a lot easier is to do this I'm going to let this set right here and we're going to go back here and take this loose now you see we've got a little bit of a cover here that cover just pops out and then you can get to the cable. Now this cable comes back and travels over this roller so to give us a little more slack what we're just going to do is pull that over the roller and it gives us a lot more room. Now we can take our front cable and we've got a whole lot more slack that we can get this in here with. Well, I've actually messed myself up because I turned this over to show you the part number. I put it in upside down. So I'm just going to take it out. Because it has to go in like this. So I'm going to put them in this way. Now we're ready to put this back on the track. Now we need to put this back on the track. To do that we just lift this up. You can see the track in there. And we just need to tip it so the shiny rollers go in first and they go upward. Should pop in place. Now we just need to go back here and put our cable back over. To do that we just pull on this cable and just goes over the roller. And then we put the cover back on it. It keeps it in place. Yep. Now we're going to have to put this pin back in here once we put the door on and we'll drive it down but then we need to have a keeper on the bottom. A lot of times when you pull these out the first time the keeper will just break and fly away. It should look like that. You can go to the parts store and get one if yours is broken. You can just get assorted little keepers. It should look about like that. Now you're going to notice that that's kind of like too small for there. But if you take a socket that will slide over this, then when you put that keeper on there, of course we'll be up here doing this, then you can just push that keeper on and it'll keep it like that. So now I'm going to slide the door back again. Get it close over here. If you have someone who can help you, sometimes it's good to slide it up in there. Now you can use a block of wood or whatever you need to prop that up or get a helper. Once you get your pin lined up, you should just be able to drive it down. Drive it down until the top is all the way flushed down. Then you need to take your little keeper and put it on there. Take a socket and push it up on it. Now we need to put this screw back in here.
Then we're ready for the tail light. These two little pins just slide into the openings. Should pop back into place. Put our screws back in. Now we want to try it, but we got to put our fuse back. So we just slide it in. So now let's see how it works. Pulls all the way in and latches, and you can hear the motor shut off. And if you look right here, we're nice and flush again. So if you've got a sliding door problem, it could be on this side or it might even be the other side. It might present a little bit differently. But go back to the back with the door open and see if that hinge is really wobbling. Because if these rollers are back, it won't stay lined up and it won't latch correctly.